Well, welcome back to the 15 Minutes of Fame. My name is Goldie, and joining me today over here in this corner, again, I have to remember, it's very funny. It's all backwards. It's like being in a theater. Uh, so like stage right is stage left, and it's all... So you're actually over here right now, Josh. This is Josh Eads. Josh Eads is a gentleman I met along the way, coincidentally, of the uh, <clears throat> Discreet Cirque series. Uh, Josh was out there taking photography for uh, Julian Carr's Cirque series, uh, turning in photos that you're kind of like, whoa, those are good. <laughs> that's really awesome. So, um, so that's how I met Josh. And I'm catching up with Josh right now because I want to know what life is like for someone who has photography as a, uh, a side profession. Um, currently and uh, may want to have that be their main profession uh, down the line. And uh, with that consideration, how Rona is treating your life and uh, making it more fun or more difficult to navigate through uh, the job market. And uh, how does one get back into photography? So the question to start with is who are you and where are you coming from? All right. Well, I'm uh, Josh Eads. I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, just a little background on me. I started uh, photography back in the mid nineties. Um, I did the photography in high school and uh, when I fell in love with it, I was driving up uh, big Cottonwood Canyon here uh, and I had, uh, let me just close this thing down here real quick so I don't get extra beeps and dings and everything on there. Um, <laughs> But I was driving up the canyon and there was an avalanche that had come down in a part of the canyon and I got out, took a picture of it, didn't think anything else of it. Um, and back in the mid 90s, it was all film. It wasn't digital. Sure. And so you didn't have the opportunity to take a thousand photos and choose one. You had a roll of 24, 12, mm -hmm. 24, 36. You had to take it. Then you had to develop. You had to um, wait an hour to get it developed. Woo. Yep. <laughs> Unless you did it yourself and then you're in this dark room and you're doing all the different chemicals and everything, which was fun. Right. Um, but after, afterwards I developed the role of film and I saw this picture that I loved. Sure. And uh, my parents loved it. They went in and got a, a, a big old blown up picture. It's like three feet by or four feet by two feet or whatever this picture of the mountains and the skies and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and when they were getting it done, one of the guys that was blowing it up for him said, Hey, you know, can I get a copy too? And me being, you know, an 18 year old kid, I was like, sure, whatever. You, you know, just take a copy. Didn't know that I could be charging for it back then. Sure. Um, fast forward to the mid two thousands, I was acting and modeling and doing all those kind of things and really didn't want to stay there. Wanted to get back behind the camera and went back behind the camera. And then from, about 2005 ish up until about 2015. Um, it was pretty much my main gig. Um, made my money more money doing that than on day jobs. Um, so I in and out of day jobs, having different employment, different things like that. Um, and then in about 2000 and, uh, 2012, 13, I started not liking photography, um, just dealing with different things of working with models all the time and, and having them show up or not show up and maybe out money for hair and makeup, uh, studio rental, things like that. And so I took a step back. Um, and in that time I met my wife. Um, we ended up getting married in 2014. Um, I have a couple kids now. Wait, uh, I just want to slow things down. You're telling me you married your wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Said to make sure that the redundancy was correct there. No, but go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> um, and so when I started shooting photography again, mm -hmm. um, it would have been easy for me to, and I never really quit. I just slowed way down. I, it would have been easy for me to get back into the working with models all the time, studio rentals and stuff like that. Got it. But I'd lost my passion for that part of photography. Um, because the logistics of the job kind of wore you out. Right. Totally right. understand. Logistics, the, the money having to worry about, well, where am I going to do this with this? Is the model going to show up? Am I going to lose my money? Am I, you know, right. There's different things like that. Um, yeah, maybe this is good for the cliche of it's more than just a pretty face. 
Right. Oh, definitely. I met plenty of those. Sure. Um, and so I start, I got some unique opportunities in 2013, 14. Um, I got to sit down and take pictures of the jazz game, actually oh. sitting on a court um, and loved it. Realized that I love sports, extreme sports and action sports more than ever, more than I ever did working with models. Got it. Um, and since then, um, you know, I started with uh, Julian back in 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, but before that, not only have I shot the jazz, I've also worked with uh, uh, Olympic bobsledder um, and on Team USA. Right. Uh, I've taken right. pictures for him, um, worked with numerous dancers, different things like that. And I've found that I love doing sports more than anything. Great. Yeah, so now you're doing sports photography. <clears throat> As I understand, we spoke before this, you're, mm-hmm. you're not, and you just said it yourself, that you're not doing photography as your main gig right now. Right. So uh, as I understand, you're doing an IT gig as a day job right now. Right. Something that probably flows out of you pretty naturally, knowing how to run camera equipment, things like this, computers, blah, right. blah, blah. So that's pulling in some money, but it sounds like you want to get back into photography. Sports is where you are happiest. And uh, in a time right now where people are actually really not getting hired too much, what is photography like during the Rona? (laughs) (laughs) You know, that's a very good question. It's actually non-existent for most photographers that I know of. Mm -hmm. Um, There are several photographers that for the month of March and the month of April have had every single booking that they've had canceled. Sure. Um, Absolutely. I've even felt the pinch, even though I don't do it full time. I've had two weddings that were backed out. Um, uh, One of them, you know, she still got married because, you know, she could have her mom, her dad, her brothers and his mom and dad and, and siblings. Small nine family. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but nobody else, and even that was right, right, right. was pushing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, it it's the same way every photographer I've talked to says you, we don't know how we're going to make ends meet. Everything is stopped. Sure. Even, even though with photography, you can technically stand thirty feet away and get a good picture of somebody. Mm-hmm. But people are like, no, I can't do it. It's too close. It's like, okay, well, so they're looking at it, reevaluating where things are in May. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and which is to me, honestly, why I'm happy that I have a day job mm-hmm. because I can still support my family where other photographers that I know of are wondering how they're going to, they're going to put food on their table next mm-hmm. week. Sure. And, and that uh, there's a lot of industries that are right in the same boat. A lot of us. So it's understandable. Um, <clears throat> in, in the time of the Rona, uh, <clears throat> is there any, type of photography that would inspire you? I mean, obviously you're, you're kind of bound to the house for a while, but uh, is there studio shots you can do? Are you inspired by, you know what, I'm going to take a shot from my window just because I'm going to see if I can get that bluebird that's uh, perched in the tree across the street. I don't know. Maybe that looks creepy. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, to be honest, um, the main things that are inspiring me in this, the Rona time. Yeah. Rona. Actually- um, taking pictures of my kids. Um, okay. Cool. Cool. Being able to be more present because I'm not worried about what's going on out there. You know, what's going to happen with this, this, you know, this basketball game that I'm going to be shooting or this promo for, uh, uh, you know, hockey nets or whatever, you know, it's, I can focus with my family and being, being present with my family. Um, in fact, one of the, one of my favorite pictures that I've captured lately was my, uh, 11 month old um on thursday night he was cuddled up with my wife and he kind of had his head turned up and was looking at her and you know just kind of you know it was like wow, this chilling is do everything right right yeah the moments yeah that makes a lot of sense it's really cool to be able to like transform and be a part of like the situation i think with a camera you get that opportunity and that's cool that you found a way Um, Okay, so then the question here lies within this. We've uh, still got plenty of time, about five minutes left. Um, The Rona might give you a chance to remix 
on the other side, you said you're waiting until May uh, to get some kind of answers as to, am I going back to the stadiums? Am I going back to the tracks? Am I going back to the, you know, to right. the outdoor uh, action sport world? Am I going to be taking pictures? Um, you know, it, it, it sounds like right now it hasn't really slowed you down because you're doing photography kind of on your own time as it is anyway. Right. Um, <clears throat> is there anything that you see coming out of the Rona that uh, you will do differently that you had done before? So like maybe you were working your photography in one way prior Rona. And now when we come out, is there something, a change, a difference? Do you want to, uh, I remember talking to you before this, you said, you know what, I'd really like to get back to photography full time. Um, mm -hmm. Is this a time to think about how to do that? What do you do? Uh, definitely. Um, and what I'm seeing in every, everybody that I've commu uh, communicated with, um, you know, people are more interested now because of what's going on and how scared everybody is um, mm -hmm. that when they can, a lot of people are wanting to have, you know, family portraits. They're wanting to, to make sure that they, they hire good photographers for that instead of hiring um, in Utah, there's a lot of photographers. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, they're um, everywhere. I know. I'm a DJ. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would say there are more photographers than DJs. A yeah, lot more. Maybe. Um, maybe. I think trees, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> trees might have one or two more trees than photographers in Utah. Um, but a lot of people that I've talked to, they say they want to go with somebody that's more that has a higher quality than the than the ones that are doing hundred dollar family shoots or three hundred dollars for a wedding, which you can find out all day here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I shoot a wedding, I usually start at fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, without that, uh, maybe uh, monetary thought. Mm -hmm. What separates you as a photographer that allows you to get your gigs moving forward? Um. You know. Well, Defines you as a, a it doesn't have to separate what defines you as jce photography like why does somebody go see i i, I wanted to interview you because i've seen your pictures at the discrete cirque series i'm like wow those are great pictures i would want to have those pictures of my running event too if i had a running event um i think the main thing that separates me from a lot of other people is the quality mm -hmm. um and the turnaround time on photos um you can have somebody that gives great quality, but their turnaround time is two months. Mm -hmm. I'm fully you know, aware. Um, doing stuff, especially with the discrete series. And I did stuff with um, the American Heart Association. Um, just one second. Porter. Just a minute, bud. Just a minute, bud. Porter's Steve. joining the house. Well, I mean, it's <clears throat> who do we got here? Who showed up today? Wow, this look at that hair. <laughs> hey buddy how you doing today yeah. oh that's great are you enjoying all this time at home with dad yeah yeah are you is it really great to have him home yeah. this much yeah yeah it is do you guys play games what do you do no at work anymore <laughs> Are you guys work friends <laughs> we are work friends as a matter of fact that is correct what's your name Porter. hi porter my name's goldie how you doing bud all right. Hey, I'll be up in just a minute, okay? Hey, Porter, it's great to see you. Actually, I think I saw your hair long before I ever saw you. That is incredible. I didn't know if he was wearing a, a helmet or if that was real. That's impressive. You, you got real. one heck of a head of hair there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cutie. That's awesome. Um, but well, so we only really have about 30 seconds to go, okay. uh, Josh. And, and I know that you're working to move forward in the uh, action sports photography. So if somebody wanted to hire you for photography and they don't want to just take my word for it, uh, where do they find you online? Where do they find you on the Instagrams, all the things? And uh, how do they uh, connect with you? All right. So the main, the main thing that I'm doing mo more than anything right now is Instagram. And it's... Uh, you can find me at underscore JCE photography. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I have my website, jcephotography.net. Mm -hmm. um, that I'm currently in the process. It's been about a two year process of redoing it. Mm -hmm. Like it's always a process. You know? um, <laughs> and those are main, the two main ways you can find me. 
Um, you can email me at josh at jcephotography.net. Um, and, you know, let's go out and, get some, and make some magic happen. Yep, and get those pictures. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,